welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides me for tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out. All their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today, I'm playing Legacy. At the request of Patreon subscriber Head Lich in Charge, I'm doing whatever I want, and what I really want to do is try this Nadu Breakfast deck. The earliest version of this was posted to Twitter by Danny Batterman. That was on pre-release weekend. And I moved some cards around. I've seen some other versions moving a few cards around. One big thing to start off is pre-war formal wear was in the paper version, but that card doesn't exist on Magic Online, which is actually a huge beat because that's an important card for this deck, or at least an important role player. But I've done my best to emulate this and tune it up a little bit. What we're doing here is Yorion Breakfast, which if you are newer to Legacy or weren't around a year ago, this was pretty normal. Even without Nadu printing and having a backup plan, just having 80 card breakfast was a thing people were doing. Just more room for activities, more room for backup plans. But once you combo, it doesn't matter how many cards are in the deck. And Nadu is a hell of a backup plan. Works with all the same stuff that Cephalid Illusionist does. While Cephalid Delusionist, if you start targeting it with zeros, will mill your whole deck and eventually bring back your Narc Amoebas, which lets you Dread Return Thassa's Oracle and just win deterministically from that spot. Nadu just flips cards until you run out of targeted abilities, and by then you're going to have a bunch of extra mana and a bunch of cards in your hand. And my rebuild of the deck includes Field of the Dead. So if you hit Field of the Dead while you're Naduing, every zombie now is two more cards you could flip, and every time you flip a land, that's a zombie that can flip two more cards. Which makes Nadu very capable of, if not getting your deck completely empty, which it might do depending on the board state, it can fill up your hand and give you enough resources to find a self-evolutionist and start going that way instead. This build of the deck is on four Delighted Halfling, which I actually do agree with because it's also playing four Teferi. The Delighted Halfling versus Noble Hierarch discourse is strong in my head, but I think Delighted Halfling is right here, but it will actually hurt games where we're not just jamming Teferi or Nadu. We'll keep an eye on that one for deck building purposes as we move forward. Other pieces of the deck, Urza Saga. There are four of these. Magic Online is not displaying it. There's four Sagas and two Shukos. I don't know why the numbers aren't there. Saga gets the Shuko. Saga can also be a backup plan. You just make some constructs and start attacking if your opponent's holding up a bunch of interaction. Any construct laying around is two extra cards when you do find Nadu. Stoneforge Mystic can also tutor Shuko, and it can get Cauldra Complete. It should be able to get pre-war formal wear, but that card does not exist. Step Through can get Cephal Illusionist or Nadu. They are both wizards. You can cycle that one. And all of that in a shell that supports Ponder, Brainstorm, Source of Lusher's Force of Will, Lorien Revealed. Just good cards all around here. I am slightly dubious as a deck builder of fitting Nadu into the traditional breakfast shell, which is really tight and doesn't really want a fourth color or a three drop. I'm also suspicious of making combo decks 80 cards, because kind of the point of combo decks is to see the important cards more often. But if anything could bridge the gap in my mind between adding a color, adding a bunch of cards, it's Nadu, who just dovetails so perfectly with everything Breakfast wants to do anyway. I'm excited to try this. Let's see how it works out. This is Nadu Breakfast from Head Lich in Charge. I'm on the play in game one. I'm going to keep my hand. I have a bunch of normal interaction, which is cool. Forest blue cards, swords to plowshares, and a Stoneforge Mystic. No line to combo yet, but Stoneforge Mystic getting Shuko makes 10 cards in my deck, instant bangers. The Illusionist, the Nadu, or the Step Throughs that could get those two cards. I think I'm just going to Tundra Pass here, because Ponder is also my blue card for Force, and losing that could be bad. A lot of people are in the queues right now trying crazy new combo decks, whether it's Nadu or Necro Dominance, even Ruby Storm I've seen kicking around. Tundra Go. And we'll see what level of awareness my opponent is currently on. If I see a Yorian deck right now, I am going to assume it's this deck, because that's what where my brain goes to. Uh-oh. Well, that's annoying. It's all right. I got Ponder. They're a Wasteland deck. Good to know. I did add 
two, maybe even three lands to this deck from the original version that I was sent, or that I saw, because I did not think there were enough. A Flooded Strand found, no problem, just working through the Wasteland. Did find Illusionist, big reveal. Underground Sea Wasteland strategy. It could be Scam, could be Grixis Delver. I even recently saw two Wastelands in a Doomsday deck, that was weird. They shuffled their library, love to see it. I'm going to fetch another Tundra and just shove Stoneforge Mystic here. I don't care if this gets countered because I have a backup one. I won't force back on this if they fight it. Yeah, force pitching force, that's fine. You have taken my first of many Stoneforge Mystics. Two Underground Seas now. That represents Orcish Bowmaster. Nadu Winged Wisdom. That is a backup blue card and a backup plan. Cycling Troll in response, okay. I don't care about that. They got Undercity Sewers, which makes me think they're still not set up yet. Okay, Days actually does matter. I don't think it matters more than my Force of Will, though. Does it? Do I force this? Get the Stoneforge in? I think I do. Sorry, Nadu. I love you. But just getting, working through all these cards, getting the Shuko, now a land off the top presents GG. The Cabal Therapy's in my hand, which is a little awkward. It means I won't be able to check their hand for interaction. And they replayed the Underground Sea rather than the Sewer. Okay. Animate Dead is fine. I got Source of Plowshares for that. I love a fetch land. No love. Okay. I'm going to play Shuko, cast Swords to Plowshares, and then attack for two. Just taking my time here. All I can do, work through their interaction. Buying myself time to operate by my by removing the creature. There's the sewers we knew about. Kept a card on top. Hate that. Come on, fetch land. Ooh. Dang. Okay. That wasteland has meaningfully impacted my entire game plan here. I'm going to attack for two. See if they want to trade Stoneforge Mystic for Orcish Bowmaster. Or for Orc Army. Because that's the card I'm worried about right now. Going to send it, though. That's what we're here for. Ooh, they found a daze. Hate that for me. Goodbye, Cephalid Illusionist. I have more looks at those with the step through. And what card did you keep on top? Probably a threat of some kind. Entomb. Uh-oh. Am I just getting dumpstered now? Suddenly Atraxa. Or Archon's probably better than Atraxa right now. Atraxa confirmed. Anime Ted also confirmed. Dothy Voidwalker in this main deck. That's horrible. Yeah, Force Blue card. They could take Force Ponder here and still have Voidwalker. I believe they still have their land drop. They could take Wasteland as well and just Shadow Realm me. Yeah, this sucks. Okay, lost this game to a, oh, the first Wasteland. Without knowing the matchup, like I could have Pondered a turn earlier and tried to move things forward. I did find another land, which does get black. I'm just going to have to ignore this Teferi and try. I can't beat Dothy Voidwalker. That is for sure. Wall Therapy naming Dothy Voidwalker. And if they force this, I'll just sack the Stone Forge to flash it back. I kind of hope they do force it, actually. Dothy, Voidwalker, please leave the hand. We've got Force, Blue Card, Troll of Kazadoom over there. I'm going to save this Cabal Therapy. I want to flash that back, naming Force of Will on the turn I'm going to go off. They could ponder for a reanimate here, and if reanimate Voidwalker, then they're in good shape. Did not shuffle the ponder. I go to 11 from this attack. I have exactly enough time to cycle step through and then play Illusionist with the clock as it currently stands. Warrior revealed. Okay. That helps. I'll get a Tundra. Am I out of Tundras? I think I am only playing two. Yeah. That's fine. I don't need white mana to win this game. If I'm going to win this game, which is a big if. Ponder. Cycling Troll. Okay. That's about the best thing they could do for me with a black man in their pool. No! Okay, I'm going to cycle for Nadu. So I can't win with this card in play. Oh, that sucks ass. Just behind the curve everywhere here. And I'm going to be a little behind this Atraxa on clock. And I have to sack Stoneforge Mystic before I play Nadu, so I don't even get the two flips off of that. Edge Maze. Thanks, I hate it. Ball Therapy, you naming Force of Will. 
course, Brazen Borrower, Reanimate. Okay. So they had access to multiple Dothy Void Walkers that turn. I get to flip two cards and see what they are. Dark Amoeba, fuck yeah. And Delighted Halfling, and then I can jump block Atraxa and then die. All right, you got me. Just a little too much there. All it took was Force Force, Days Days, Reanimate and Atraxa, Double Dothy Voidwalker. That was a close game, actually. Like, it, it didn't look like it based on the final board, but that was competitive the whole time. Okay, I want Soul Guide Lantern, Veil of Summer for sure. Lavinia is a maybe. Their free permission matters a lot. Surgical Extraction is a maybe. You frequently want to slow down after board. When you're playing breakfast and become kind of a just mid-range control deck. I don't really like Force of Will in this matchup. I like that I can protect my own combo. But Veil of Summer and Lavinia do that too. While being better against my opponent's deck. This member should probably be in. I already caught one Shuko. I have eight routes to Shuko. I have these Nomads still in. I think Teferi is really good. I think Cabal Therapy is really good. Normally I would trim a Nomad, but having Nadu in as the Juke means that I do want to be able to spam onto Nadu if we get there. Maybe Field of the Dead is too slow for this matchup, and I'll bring in Dismember. Okay, let's go. Okay, this is not exactly Blazing, but Delighted Halfling getting ahead of Days is really exciting. I have a backup land in the form of Lorien Revealed if they Wasteland me. Delighted Halfling does make Culture Complete uncounterable, in case that matters. I wonder if this deck just wants four copies of the One Ring. If we have Delighted Halfling anyway, and we're trying to churn through an 80-card deck, that doesn't sound embarrassing to me. A Land Go is what they got. Drew my one of Shuko. I'm going to start with a Ponder before Bowmaster can get me. I don't actually want any of these cards. A Nomads is cool, but... We're not ready for it. I'm going to shuffle. There we go. Cycle Lorien revealed. I could get Tundra and just play out Chuko here. Or I could get another Trop, abandon white mana, and play another Halfling. The Dread Return is in my hand, which is super awkward. I don't even have two black sources in the deck. I could also just get and play Meticulous Archive and not play Shuko this turn. I'm going to go with that. I'm in the market for something like Teferi or Veil of Summer to really... Make it happen here. Ponder's on top. Do I want a ponder? I'll take it in case things go awry here. Currently in trouble to Wasteland, Days, Force of Will, Fatal Push. A lot of things. Perhaps more setting up is in order. If they just send it on an Archon of Cruelty, I can never win. Archon of Cruelty confirmed. It's kind of gross because it does put the Dreader turn in the graveyard for me, but I just put Ponder on top, so I know I'm a mana short to go off here. Yeah, okay. I am happy that we're doing this because I actually am testing. This is a deck I would seriously consider in my own life for my own games. <laughs> Wasteland, great. Um, I'm determining if this game is winnable. I don't think it is. Just getting punched into the ground by Scam on my first match ever playing this deck is useful to me because... You have to know that if you're going to play a deck like this. That's just the rules. Maybe I'm not supposed to bin that Lavinia because if they reanimate it, I can't win. I can present a win next turn. I have the breakfast combo, but it is dead to any removal spell or counter spell. Discard Cauldre Complete. I'm at seven. Dead next turn. Just got to go for it. Hey! And the graveyard hate closes the door. Yeah, that was a firm kicking. On to the next round. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. On the play in round two, basic land, field of the dead, three to fairies. Let's go. 
But an easy pitch to force of will, that's for sure. I think I'm just going to get the field out there. Development. I would like to cast these to fairies at some point. Oh, opponent has eight cards in their hand. And just going to clean up. Must be some reanimator strategy. Oh, it's Manalist Dredge. I've been gotten. The old stupid joke that isn't funny of ha ha ha. You took the play. You must not be on Manalist Dredge. Actually taking the draw would have been up a card here. That's cool. All right. Well, the race is on. You'll see how many street wraiths and stuff they have to really crack this open. Or if they're just slow dredging. They have a Grave Troll. I did not consider forcing the Once Upon a Time. I don't think there's a universe where they just don't have a Dredger. But I guess you have to keep all hands with this deck. Okay. They have the Grave Troll, two Bridge from Belows. There's a Street Wraith happening in response to Phantasmagorian's ability. Narc Amoeba. All this is happening in my main phase. They planned for Prized Amalgam. Maybe they actually didn't have a Dredger. Alistrade Spy, Dread Return. Okay, so they are the combo build. It's been a long time since I had to play with or against Manalist Dredge. There's no Cabal Therapies currently in the graveyard. Nether Shadows trigger. You get back two of the three. You need three creatures above Nether Shadow for that to work. And they milled a Cabal Therapy. Gat, dang it. Well, I have to put my faith into Brainstorm now. Cabal Therapy resolves. They just obviously named Force of Will. Oh, they named Crop Rotation. That's so funny. They got too clever. Okay, I guess Field of the Dead threw them off the scent. And they're still way ahead and doing fine here. But I'm not literally dead. I'll take that as a win. Okay, Dread Return. Targeting Balustrade Spy. Well, I mean, obviously Force of Will. Do they have their own Force of Will to back this up? No. Okay. They didn't attack for damage first. Oh, there's two Dread Returns in the graveyard. I didn't even see the second one. Yeah, they had three shots at this. Okay, gonna have to brainstorm for another force here. Three outer in my 80 cards. Tundra, brainstorm. Cool. All right. Manalist Dredge. I will be taking the draw. Surgical Extraction, Surgical Extraction, Lavinia, Soul Guide Lantern. These are all cards they have trouble beating. Force Negation and Pithing Needle. I don't. Needle can name Phantasmagorian, then it's really hard for them to do big things or street wraith yeah i think i want all these cards prismatic ending plows really good if we end up in a grindy situation where i stop them from functioning but can't quite win i don't think i need cabal therapy versus this deck though that is how i get dread return out of my hand if it ends up there i can afford to board out basic planes they're not attacking my mana I could just cut all the Force of Wills. They don't cast spells, and then Force of Negation doesn't come in either. And that means I get to keep a bunch of these cards. Okay, yeah. Veil of Summer also fends off Cabal Therapy. I'm doing it like this. Let's go. Would you like to play first? No. My hand is very bad, and I will be mulliganing it. Mulligan. This one is less bad. Still doesn't really keep up with what Manalist Dredge is doing. Okay, Mulligan. Is this one fast enough? I will keep this, put Dread Return, and step through to the bottom. Lead on Urza Saga, go for a turn three win. And they can't do anything because their deck doesn't play real cards. Oh, turn two win. Okay, Nomad's End Core, pass. Hopefully they just go to discard and then die here. Discarded Phantasmagorian, Urza Saga, Cephalid Illusionist. And we begin. The milling. They get to see my whole sideboard plan here and my whole 75. They have something like surgical extraction. They can win. I am unprotected. Okay, they've seen enough. Honor among criminals. We both just conceded without making them show the other deck. Okay, I'm going to be on the play this game because we're in Bizarro World. I'm just thinking about these sorts of plowshares versus Force of Wills and Veil of Summers. Do I want to play to a game where I have to beat like some random prize amalgams and stuff? Or do I want to just focus on dumpstering them and not getting dumpstered myself? I think this is the dump and don't get dumped game plan. Culture Complete is not going to be part of this plan. I guess I bring in Veil. 
step through is part of the speed package. Maybe I cut a Nadu. Nadu or Teferi. Yeah, probably Teferi. What is Teferi even doing? Okay, here we go. Maybe selected to be on the draw. Cabal Therapy is interesting because if I hit its time walk, like if I just Cabal Therapy them, name like Narc Amoeba or something, and they discard it, that's that. I get another turn, and then I can Nomads. Do I think I can blind hit this deck with a Cabal Therapy is the problem? And what does my hand do if I miss? And I like Brainstorm. I like having half my combo. I'm going to keep a card that they probably play four of that I wouldn't mind being in their graveyard is okay they're firing once upon a time if this just reveals some shit i don't care about i can name that maybe street wraith is my blind name because not only do i not care if it's in their graveyard i actively don't want them to have those ogari thug i will not be naming that with cabal therapy okay this is the world i chose hero mode cabal therapy target you i'll name street wraith please be right we got one Time walked you. Okay, sick. That means all they can do is draw next turn, pass, and then draw next turn, go to discard. Narcomiba, oh, if I name Narcomiba next turn, I get two cards, which buys me two whole turns. But that costs me my nomads. I'm going to brainstorm and see what happens. I'd love to draw a Delighted Halfling or some shit I don't care about. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. Uh, my hand's very bad for the next several turns. but. Put back. I can put Narcomiba into play for free off Meticulous Archive next turn, but then Dread Return is stuck in my hand. I think I'd rather have the free card in play. I put back Narcomiba and Dread Return. Tropical Island. Delighted Halfling. Two more time walks. Put those Narcomibas into the graveyard. Okay, this is going to be a weird game. I just bought myself three turns to get out of my Brainstorm lock and do stuff. The first time walk turn, complete. Meticulous Archive puts an Archimiba into play. Put into my graveyard. Sick. Just how we drew it up. I am through the Brainstorm. Now I'm drawing actual random cards. Opponent goes to 8 cards next turn. Blood is Strand, not really good. It is another Surveil land. Fetch. Edge Maze. Don't need this land. I'm going to put Yori in my hand. It's just a better clock than Nomad's and Core. And the Surgical Extraction hopefully will buy time if they haven't drawn another Dredger since the Golgari Thug. And they really do just have to draw off the top of their deck. And what you get is what you get. Yorian's in the graveyard now. Nadu Winged Wisdom. That is the vibe. Okay. Nomad's. Nadu. I'm going to leave up green because I play Bale of Summer. And let's just draw six cards. And then on their turn, I'll draw six more cards. Force of Will, let's go. Delighted Halfling. Another Nomads. Stoneforge Mystic. Field of the Dead! Oh my god. can we just win right now? Who's the zombie deck now? Okay, hit a land. I can play Delighted Halfling, who hits two more cards. I can also spam out any number of zombies on their turn. All right, we're in the field. Now we're cooking. Let's see if I can just win. This still had all these. Surgical extraction would be great. Ponder. Hit a land on the last hit. We're going again. Every land also means that that's a card I can play. God, Magic Online stacking the zombies. Please don't. I can't tell who's who. What a waste of time. I'm just literally clicking on zombies. Okay. Brainstorm. Fetch land, let's go. That's double zombies. I'm just going to fetch for the, the thinning and the extra zombie guaranteed. Eventually I'll run out of fetchables. Is it the back one? Is that how this works? All right, I targeted the back one and nothing happened. The middle one? Okay, it was the middle one this time. Great. Okay, I hit another Nadu, which means that if this whiffs, I can spend three mana and go again because a second Nadu resets all of them because it's a new ability. If I can find this zombie in the pile. Oh my god, I hate this so much. It was literally in the middle. Why are they putting it in the middle? Why would you do this to me, Magic Online? I also... Can't, oh, there's the arrow. Okay. Let's see this hand. Oh, I drew Cephalid Illusionist somewhere along the way. 
but the dread returns in my hand. I knew that was there. Oh, I can brainstorm it away. Okay, now I just have a a GG. Okay, Cephalid Illusionist. Brainstorm. And they're done. Okay, cool. Yeah, I forgot I was supposed to be checking for Illusionist. I'm pretty sure Nadu could have got through the whole deck there by stringing Nadus together with Field of the Dead. Because I had another 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I had another 18 flips there, even without hitting the Illusionist. But that was pretty sweet. On to the next one. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set Tournament Edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era. An award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set. And a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash The Resleevables. I'm on the play in round three. I think my hand is perfectly fine. I'm going to rock with it. I'm just going to archive pass. I have Nadu. I'm looking for a way to target it. Urza Saga will get there eventually. I'll keep that. I think I would like to ponder here. So I have a shuffle available in the form of Warrior Revealed. Stoneforge Mystic and Swords of Plowshares. I like all these cards. I'm going to take the Stoneforge. And Prismatic Fisted decks don't usually have good targets for Swords of Plowshares. So I will leave up the option to shuffle should I choose to do that. Based on what they present to me. Wasteland, okay. Well, I will be shuffling. I want a tropical island to cast my Stoneforge Mystic with. This deck does look good when all the engines lay on top of each other. Moto Bug drew the plow anyway. And a fetch in response. Prismatic, Vista, and Wasteland are frequently not in decks together. So I'm not quite sure what's going on right now. Is this is a mono blue Delver deck. Stoneforge got dazed. And Brainstorm. Okay. We've gone this far. To end up in a board state where I can just cast Nadu and see what happens. Ponder. The Ponder is able to shuffle the Brainstorm cards if they don't want them anymore. Do not shuffle the Ponder. And Urza Saga. I don't mind if I do. All right, I'm going to take Saga and put Yorian in my hand. I'm not going to shove Nadu into Days or Dismember or whatever when I could protect it with Karakas next turn. If I can get a Black Source and see their hand, I would be cool with that too. Okay, another Saga. The stacking Sagas don't really do anything. All I really have to tutor is Shukos. They're going to reveal a second color. What are we doing? Okay, there is a blue-white deck. Oh, we're Dreadnought. Sure, that's fun. You got it. Oh, there's also a sick Null Drifter deck that's floating around. Because Null Drifter draws cards on cast, not on resolution. And then you get to keep an Annihilator creature after you cantrip. It's pretty gross, actually. And a turn, Swords to Plowshares. And this deck almost certainly has a bunch of dress downs in it. So I'm not going to go too hard on the Saga, but this token is free. A okay, float mana. Get Shuko. Play another Saga. Blue, green. It's Nadu time. Yeah, dress down in response. Kills the construct and makes Nadu not draw cards right now. Still going to make it a 4 4, and I can bounce it with Caracas. Boing. I'll have that back, please. Okay. We basically just didn't do anything on that turn cycle. I killed their thing, they killed my thing, and we're back. I'm still in the market for that black source to check their hand. Still not getting it. Which is fine. Okay, Tundra. I think I'm just going to do some construct stuff here. Why get crazy? Into open mana. Meticulous Archive. They got rid of a Flooded Strand. Or no, they fetched with that Flooded Strand? No, they kept the card. Okay. That was the Flooded Strand they fetched with. Construct. A Float Mana. I'm not making another Construct. Get the other Shuko. Island. I think I'm just going to suit this up and attack for five. Make them figure that out before I do anything else. 
I can also play Narcomiba because I have a mana floating, which is going to give away that I'm a breakfast deck also. But I think that's okay. Ooh, just taking the damage. You know what I'm not going to do? Cast Nadu into this open 5 mana. Doorkeeper Thrall. Okay. I can kill one Dreadnought with Prismatic Ending. Prismatic Ending can never kill a Null Drifter. That card literally costs 7. Dreadnought Resolves. Brainstorm. Okay. And they do have a Null Drifter. When you cast this draw 2 cards, sick. It's going to stay in play as a 4-4 Flying Annihilator 1. Powerful stuff. Can I get that Black Source? Nope. All right. Well, hard mode activated. I'm going to start by ending the Dreadnought. And then I'll play my land and play Nadu and hope they don't have Force of Will. Disappointing. Okay. Um, I'll move Ashuko onto Narcomoeba, I guess. Or two of them. Oh, wait. I can still attack this turn. I can attack first and then move my Shukos. Because their 12-12 is gone. Okay, attack for five. Then I'll move my Shukos back to Narcomoeba. Now it's a powerful combat object. If I draw a... Alright, so Annihilator 1 is happening. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. I can't afford to lose my basic island here. I still like the double Shuko. It's pushing real damage on them. Merktide Regent. Okay, I'm no longer pushing damage. I need a removal spell or a combo piece. Hey, do we win? Okay, uh, well, all I can do is play this card and hope I win. Cephalid Illusionist. Please don't have a Swords of Plowshares. Equip Shuko. Oh, wait, Thassa's Oracle doesn't work. How do I do this? Fuck, Doorkeeper Thrall is so good. Um, I can flip some Narcomoebas into play to block. I don't have an Uro or anything in my deck. Oh, I can Dread Return Nadu. Okay. Dread Return Nadu and draw card. Like, what does that even do? It finds a removal spell. Okay, this is going to take some finessing. But if I Dread Return Nadu, I can't Thassa's Oracle anymore. A Doorkeeper with Thrall. Busted. What have I milled over so far? The Dread Return is there. There's a Nadu there. I need at least one creature in play with the Nadu to do stuff. All right, here we go. Narcomoeba. Is my Oracle gone? No. Okay, so if I Dread Return right now, getting back Nadu, I can draw four cards. I have no way to recur the Thassicus Oracle if it goes. Aldra's gone. Okay, I'm going to Dread Return Nadu, sacking the Narcomoeba, the Narcomoeba, and the Construct, and keep the Illusionist. Because if I can get Oracle into my hand, then I can mill out the rest. Swords to Plowshares, okay. I can kill Doorkeeper Thrall now, but I can't get Thassa's Oracle into play yet. There's the, the black source I've been looking for for the whole game. Field of the Dead is gone. How do I win? How do I win? What's the play? Okay, uh, I'm going to target Illusionist with Shuko and just hope that things line up correctly. Step through in my hand. Oh no, I had passed priority. Did I mill the Oracle? I don't think so. Okay, step through, cycle that, get the Thassa's Oracle, target Illusionist again. If I hit a land here, oh no, I hit an Illusionist. Okay, so what do I do with this? I plow the Doorkeeper Thrall, and then sack a thing and continue play. Okay, uh, I think I'm supposed to wait. Move Shuko back to Nadu, and I'm just going to pass from here. They can annihilate one of the Shukos. I can take the damage. And then I can try to empty my deck with Cabal Therapy up next turn. My Devotion is also four if I cast Thassa's Oracle. So I don't have to be totally empty. And Null Drifter is attacking. It can annihilate, I think, one of the Shukos. Or do I need all the lands? I would hate to lose to Prismatic Ending here. Do I lose to Prismatic Ending anyway? I could sack Illusionist. I have another one of those. I don't have another Shuko. Okay, I'm going to sack a Shuko and hope they don't have Prismatic Ending. I'm not going to trade Nadu for this thing. That's not what the game's about. Okay, I get two Cabal Therapies here. Oh, Nomads is sick. That means I can go off in response to interaction. Okay, I'm going to Therapy first, naming Dressdown. 
Dress down. Stifle Dreadnought. Okay, Stifle's the card in their hand. I can beat Stifle. Sick. Okay. Swords to Plowshare is Doorkeeper Thrall. Nomad's Encore. Get my deck empty. Flashback Cabal Therapy, naming Stifle, and we're done. Brainstorm. I should probably target Nadu first. Just get the actual cards rather than just mill myself. Narc Amoeba. All right, I mean, that would have been nice to be in play instead of here, but it's fine. Delighted Halfling. Cabal Therapy, you sacking this. Nadu, who I no longer need. Thank you for your service. Goodbye. Name Stifle. Holy smokes, what a game that was. Okay, Nadu, I see you. Okay, we're playing against the Nightmare matchup because anything that would let Thassa's Oracle win is also able to put Phyrexian Dreadnought into play. I need removal in. Dismember's great. I don't think Lavinia's good. I don't think Pithing Needle's good. I don't have much for this. Haywire Might can't exile Dress Down because if Dress Down is in play, Haywire Might doesn't have any abilities. Veil vale of Summer, they are a counterspell deck, I guess. The Fairy is probably my best weapon here. We did see Wasteland. Do I just slow down a little bit? Cut a step through. Cut a Shuko. I think I like Halfling versus their Days Wasteland deck. I'm looking for either one more cut or I just don't board in one of these cards. Could be Lorien. Okay. I'm going to try this. Okay. I ponder hand with some removal. Keep it. Prismatic Vista. Island Ponder. Smart. And handsome. What a powerful play. What a good looking play. Nomad's Encore. Okay. I could now just go for the Goldfish on turn two. But I'm not convinced that would even work against this deck. With all their various interactions. Hello, Teferi. Okay. I'm going to put Windswept Teeth in my hand, and I can play Halfling this turn, and then Teferi next turn on the Uncounterable. They could stifle my fetch land. That would be a dick move, but also a thing their deck does. Cool. We're just in there. I don't have any basic forests in the deck. Delighted Halfling. Go get him. And set Brainstorm. I can cast Teferi even if they Wasteland me. They would need removal spell plus wasteland, which they do play. We've seen plow. Brainstorm no shuffle. Uh-oh. Oh, force of will to back it up now. Well, folks, I'm just going to cast it to fairy. Uncounterable. And if they flash in doorkeeper thrall or some shit in response, I'll just bounce that. Yep, dress down. Just looking for a cantrip here. I'm going to plus to fairy because I have a... Protected win, double protected win that I can place on the stack next turn. I can do it through a removal spell. I can't do it through a wasteland if they kill Caracas, because I do need the white. Volcanic Island fetched. Pyroblast. Hell nah. Force of Will. I'm going in on this. Oh no, a basic mountain as well. You psycho. Blood Moon. Interesting. Oh, that doesn't matter. I just bounce it with Teferi. Okay. The game is over. Unless they play Fairy Macabre which is a crazy thing to include in a blue deck. Okay, Bounce Blood Moon. Cephalid Illusionist. Nomad's Encore. Beep, boop, bop. Two Narcomibas on the first hit. Sweet. That was a sweet little navigation of that situation. GG's. On to the next round. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, Playing for a huge prize or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing magic. I'm on the draw in round four. I'm going to mulligan this hand with three Nadus in it. Another black card in the opener. Considering I only play two of those, I'm certainly drawing them a lot. I'll keep this hand and put Field of the Dead on the bottom. I have a wizard here if I can find a way to target my wizards. I have some very slow card selection. Let's hope this is a slow matchup. They fetched a Volcanic Island and played a Dragon's Rage Chandler. Perfect. It's not a slow matchup. And a bobble. 
Okay, now we can test this deck versus Delver. I do want to stress test this. I do want the good matchups. I mean, good decks in the format to match up against me here and see how it stacks up. Bobbling me. I hope this doesn't reveal anything obvious like no meds and core. Second bobble, okay. They're one card type away from being delirious on turn one. And they got there. Just fully delirious. Powerful stuff. And they're looking at my top card again. Okay, they draw for their two baubles. <laughs> it was literally no meds in core. Okay, Meticulous Archive is the best I can do here. Nadu into the graveyard. I need lands. I need to play this game. I need lands and protection. Unfortunately, Archive comes into play tapped, so even if they have the Wasteland, I can't fire off a Swords to Plowshares here. We'll see what happens. I spoke that Nomads into existence. Delver of Secrets. The third bauble. Please don't waste me. Not a Wasteland. We dodged. Still under a lot of pressure, but at least we're not getting Wastelanded. We will play Magic cards. I promise. At least one. Another Nadu to the Graveyard. Man. Sorry, Nadu. I miss you already. I could ponder now and take the beats. I think I should do that rather than try to source the plowshares into days. A land number three and Teferi. Teferi's not very good. I do like land number three. I don't like Teferi. Brainstorm is fine. Okay, I will take the land and leave Brainstorm on top. Because I can Brainstorm, then step through next turn. Even if they hit me for 6 here, I go to 11, they hit me for 6 again, I'm at 5, and then I can try to execute. They're bobbling themselves in the upkeep, see if this Delver is going to flip before revealing to it. It looks like they were going to miss. Thundering Falls, a third look, a third opportunity. And they kept the card there. Days, perfect. Maybe this turn I'll play Swords to Plowshares and Shuko. Because knowing the Days is there now, I can't just send it. Next turn, Urza Saga, Swords to Plowshares, the Dragon's Rage Channeler, Cast Shuko, and they know I have Nomads in hand. Unfortunately, the way my colors are right now, I couldn't play the Nomad out here. Teferi's on top of my deck right now. I think I might end step a Brainstorm here just to see what cards are what. We're coming down to the wire, and I can cycle a step through in my upkeep if I don't like any of the cards. If they do something like play Murktide Regent right now and put Lethal on board, if the Brainstorm finds a land, then I could also Teferi. A brainstorm. Six cards in their hand, no land drop, no threat. That means it's all interaction. Okay, they daze this end step Brainstorm. I love that. That's days gone and they're down a mana. Deal. Okay, I, can, I have Brainstorm plus step through here. I could also just try to shove Teferi. I think I'd rather brainstorm and see if I find a land and if shoving to fairy sounds reasonable or not. Force of will back up. Okay. I feel like I'm close to doing something here. If I put back to fairy and ponder, then I can go with force backup next turn and around days. Or no, I have to step through this turn. Oh, but I don't need nomad in play. Okay, I'm going to get rid of nomad and ponder. Or Nomad and Teferi. Yeah, Nomad and Teferi go. And then... Do I want to land now? I think so. Island cycle this. I think I get Underground Sea, just in case I draw the Cabal Therapy. I've been very good at doing that this game. Or this league. Okay, I'm dead to Double Bolt. Well, I have to force into Double Bolt. There's one of them. I'm at 5. If they attack me, I'm at 2. If I force a Bolt, I'm at 1. They have Thundering Falls as one of their six cards in their hand. I go to two, in bolt range. Chain Lightning, Force of Will, that. If they force this force, they win. If they force my thing next turn, yeah, okay. A little too slow here, but we did thread up a protected win despite all that, all those early beats. Okay. Hydra Blast comes in. Soul Guide Lantern. Dismember is kind of a tough beat. I want that more for stuff like... Troll of Kazadoom and Magus of the Moon than I do Delver of Secrets, but I think I just want all my removal in. Lavinia is interesting. I don't really want Forces versus Delver. I can shave a Shuko. Lavinia is cool because uh, she's uncounterable with Delighted Halfling, and she's another creature you can target if you have Nadu. There's just a lot to like about that. I like Ultra Complete as well. I think this matchup's too fast for Field of the Dead. 
maybe that tech just isn't even worth it. But it was part of that insane game earlier. I don't know. A lot of moving parts here, especially in the Yorian shell where you have so many cards. Okay, I have a delighted halfling into Nadu here. We'll see if that holds. I kind of want to get Savannah to play Stoneforge in case Delighted Halfling dies. I don't have any cantrips I need to worry about here. Yet. Okay, Halfling's in. I'm pretty into it if they just go, like, Delver Pass. Wasteland, I'm less into that. But at least the Halfling is doing something here. If I draw a White Source, I can still play Stoneforge. I'm just putting Ursa Saga in. If I don't... Oh, sick. Uh, how do I want to do this? I think I'm just going to play Saga and pass and let them think they got me on the, the land. Attack for one in case that matters. I think it's more likely that that one point is going to matter than that I'm going to want to dismember this turn, which is the decision I just made. And I'm not cycling step through this turn. I'm cycling Lorien. Another wasteland. Cool. Going to get Tundra, which can cast Stoneforge Mystic. Sweet. Okay. Weathered a double wasteland start, thanks to Delighted Halfling. Mana dorks are sick. Swords to Plowshares on the follow-up. Stoneforge Mystic. That has resolved. I think I want Shuko. In the Shuko getting ready to pop off with the Nadu in my hand, I also have step through for Illusionist. Yeah, I want Shuko. I'm not gonna let them strand a cauldron in my hand with a lightning bolt here. I do need a land. Double wasteland still powerful. But we're doing stuff. They should make a land that's a wizard that I could get with step through. That would be nice. A rat or riptide laboratory. Dragon's Rage Channelers here. Got a bobble to go with it. If I draw a land, I'm slamming not do this turn. It's a 3-4. And if they do interact with it, I draw a card. And I have the step through working in the background for the Shuko, which is the real win. I kept a card on top with Surveil. Bobble targeting me. Please tell me it's a Misty Rainforest. Mon land, any untapped land to ferry, you suck. I think I want to swords to plowshares. Just get that card selection off, and I'll just attack for two. Opponent knows I have to ferry and Chuko. They don't know I have Nadu, but this delighted halfling is going to be a priority for them if they can remove it, because I've got a permanent that's a big problem if it's uncounterable. Tropical Island, second color revealed deep into game two. Delver resolves. DRC also resolves. Come on, deck. How about that land? Oh my god, Dread Return. Okay, I'm going to dismember Dragon's Rage Channeler. I just don't want this selection to be part of the game. I don't want Shuko to be dazable. I have so many ways to cash that out. I don't want to take one if Delver doesn't flip. So I'm going to leave back Stoneforge. I just took four to kill the 1-1. One, one. Okay, they're using Brainstorm to get aggressive about flipping Delver. Keep in mind, this play pattern that we're experiencing right now is after I added multiple lands to the original list I was sent. I know I've boarded out a land here and there in the league, so maybe there is still one too many. But 26 just doesn't feel like enough to make this work. A Force Negation in their hand. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Deck, I'll still take that land. I'm not too proud. We're in. Oh my goodness. In. Okay. Nadu or Teferi. Teferi takes pressure off while drawing a card. But Nadu, yeah, I, I think I want Nadu in play. Nadu is also bigger than their creatures. And if Nadu survives the turn cycle, then Teferi is better if it's shielded by a 3 4 body. And if I can go sh Teferi, bounce something, find a land, Shuko, flip four cards. Six cards. We're in. Okay. Passing the turn. And even if they kill Nadu, I replace it with a card. Where flipping lands in this spot is really good. I am on a two-turn clock if they can clear Nadu, though. So I don't have all the time in the world to operate here. How sick would it be that they had to double bolt Nadu? Just let me draw two cards. You lose two cards. Loot a Delta. Fetch. Ooh, just getting a tap land in their main phase. Emergency meeting. So Channeler has to attack here. Into second Channeler. If they play Merktide pre-combat, Dragon's Rage Channeler doesn't have to attack, but then I know that they don't have Bolt or Pyroblast or anything. Nadu's gigantic ass saving the day here. Just an emergency 4-4 Merktide so they didn't have to delete their own creature. 
Okay, there's a land in the top two cards of my deck. I'm going to have a very good turn cycle. I can at least cast a fairy uncounterably, clear the Murktide. Soul Guide Lantern. All right, we're not there yet. White, blue, green. Here's the Teferi. Bounce Murktide. Come on, land. Can we do it? Culture complete. Absolutely not. All right. So to clear Teferi, they will have to get re-delirious and sacrifice a creature. And they know I have Shuko, so they are incentivized to clear Teferi. If they held back a Lightning Bolt last turn because it doesn't kill Nadu anyway, because they knew Teferi was coming, that would make some sense. He did have a Lightning Bolt. Okay. Teferi shot his shot. Another Delver, so their hand is Murktide Force and Negation Mystery Card. There's no attacks here. Nomads, let's go. Okay, so I can play Shuko, which hopefully they'll Force of Negation. And then I play Nomads and just flip eight cards. They can't force the negation Nomads anyway, but I kind of want them to go down two cards to stop this. Force Pitching Murktide. That's handled. And if Nadu hits two lands in the eight looks, or three lands in the eight looks, I have Breakfast Combo as well. Here we go. All right, I just hit an Illusionist, so now I only need one land. And we're doing it. Lord and Revealed. That doesn't count. Lighted Halfling, that's two more looks. Another Illusionist. There's the land. If I get another land in the three looks, I can play around days. Cool. The Dread Return is in my hand. Of course it is, which means I can't check their hand. That's probably fine, though. I'm going to play an Illusionist, and we get a Concession. Okay. Nomads, get another flip. I'm going to fetch for my underground C, just in case I flip my Cabal Therapy to the Nadu. Okay, I think I'm out of Nadu triggers that don't target Zephyr Illusionist. I will hit some Narc Amoebas along the way. I should probably be fetching to make sure I don't run out of mana. <laughs> I flip the Narc Amoeba into my hand instead of milling it. That is an awkward component of this deck. Okay, they've had enough. Cool. Sweet. Nadu, hard carry. Okay, I cut Field of the Dead. Do I want it back just as a source of mana? Because that mattered a lot through that whole game. Probably not. Okay, I am... I'm just going to hit Submit. Let's do it. The Cabal Therapy in my hand. It's basically a ley line at this point. Just starts in my hand. I am actually going to keep this hand. Controversial, but it does have four lands, two removal spells, and interaction. And if I can buy time until I'm doing something, like I would rather place my bets on slowing Delver down than me drawing into it, than mulling and trying to shove a combo through Delver. A multi six, land go. That's what I want. Let's just play land go for like 25 turns here. Windswept Teeth is great. That lets me get a surveil land and do stuff without losing my line to Underground Sea. Thundering Falls. And passing the turn, I'm going to get Meticulous Archive, because white is more important than green right now. Blooded Strand to the graveyard. That tells my opponent I'm not looking for lands. Oh. Oh. This nasty little lady. I'm not going to shove her yet. I'm not going to play her into days. But she will be nice at some point. Especially if we play this land go game for a while. Just like Lavinia into combo. Off. Five or six mana. She's pretty bad against Pyroblast and Lightning Bolt, though, which are both good against my combo also. Stoneforge Mystic. Now we're cooking. Okay, I think I want to test the waters with a Stoneforge Mystic. Just kind of deciding which of these creatures I care more about. I'm going to get Cauldron this time and make them respect Stoneforge Mystic. If their hand's full of counter spells, this culture will kill them. And if their hand has Lightning Bolt in it, I need that out of their hand to play the game anyway. Touched a Vulk in my end step. Lightning Bolt. I could Hydro Blast this. Yeah, let's, let's start a little something. Okay, I won that fight. Didn't get dazed. I like that. I had another one. That's fine. Had to get through those two anyway. And those are two removal spells for Lavinia gone. I guess I could have fetched... Underground Sea, Cabal Therapy, Naming Lightning Bolt, and then played Stoneforge Mystic that turn. Would have got two of them. That's sick. 
They bobbled themselves, fetching because they don't like it. And they just passed into my turn. I love these no-pressure Delver starts. Just not a care in the world. Drop Lavinia. And I drew the other Hydroblast. They can protect Lavinia from Bolt or Pyroblast. So if they keep hitting land drops and not playing spells, Lavinia might not do much. Okay, they forced pitching Force of Negation. Him to Turok, I'll take it. Just softening them up. One piece at a time. And we're just raw-dogging Brazen Borrower. I will plow that. This might have been bait, and if they shove Murktide right now, that's really bad for me. But if they just pass... All right, now I, I just need to find something to do. Brainstorm. That qualifies as something to do. Get this Cauldra out of here. Okay, Lorian can shuffle. I want to play Urza Saga. I kind of like having access to the Cabal Therapy. I think Savannah and Cauldra are going to go. And then I play Saga. You can even put Yorion in hand here. The power of Cephalid Breakfast is that it doesn't have to combo to beat you. I gotta watch out for Price of Progress. I am kinda exposed here. Yeah, there's a Delver. They've come up with a threat. I could just draw Cauldra here, then cast Lorien Revealed. Is that better? Or did I put Savannah on top? Yeah, I'm actually gonna take whichever card I put back. I hope it's Cauldra. Okay, good. I did that correctly. Other than not planning around the fact that Lorien revealed as a spell. Okay, Delver versus my 19 life points. They got two cards in hand. Delver did not flip. That means my construct can trade with Delver if it attacks. A deal that I will be happy to take. Okay, they're coming for me. I wonder if they have Dress Down, or if they thought I wouldn't take this trade. I have Inevitability, not them. So trading off with my 1-1 one -one for your 1-1 one -one is a great deal. And if they end up having to lightning bolt this, that is awesome. Unholy heat. Okay, do I want to trade off? I think I do. I'm going to counter the heat with Hydro Blast and then try to take this Delver off my back. Because I have Yorian, I have Saga ticking, I have Cauldra in my hand. I have Lorian revealed, I can cast. Strongly favored if this game takes forever, which I want it to do. Did they sandbag a Murktide? Murktide is full strength here. It does appear to be what they're casting. Fair enough. And I'm going to fetch for the Hedge Maze now, because Warren Revealed can get the Black Land if I think I have to Ball Therapy, but they only have one card in their hand. They bin the Misty Rainforest. Draw for turn. Come on, Seth, Little Illusionist. <laughs> Nadu, okay. Uh, if I make a Construct, I get an extra two cards, but I'm playing into Days. I think I do not make a Construct here. It will be a wuss. Tutor, Shuko. Green, blue, Nadu. A daze was the one card that could get me there. Nadu hit a land. Going again. Nadu hit a ponder. Okay, ponder. Find me a removal spell. Find me another creature. There's so many things we could do here. Oh my god. All right, Delighted Halfling. The Fairy, Flooded Strand. I can play both of these cards. I will take the Delighted Halfling. Play it. Shuko will flip land into play, then Teferi into my hand. I think I should take the turn off, though, and make sure Teferi resolves. I can go to 11, that doesn't matter. But once again, I'm not going to just shove into daze. Okay, I'm just going to pass. I'm chilling. Chain Lightning, my delighted halfling, which flips me a card. It flipped Caracas. If only this was a legend. One of my Dark Twisted fantasies to playing this deck is... My opponent targeting Nadu with any removal spell, and then I fl blind flip Krakus, then pick up Nadu and draw another card. And if their other card is Pyroblast, we got him. Okay. I mean, this is happening. Flip a card, Krakus. It, it wasn't the blind flip on the Nadu, but this was a blind flip to save the Nadu and get me an extra card. Horrific stuff. I have a lot of lands in play now. And they can attack me to 11, and then Teferi puts them to no action. Okay, I'm at 11. Just have to survive Price of Progress. That's the only card left that I could possibly care about out of their deck. I think I want to fetch some lands. I'll leave one fetch land back in case I find a cantrip this turn, which is extremely likely with the amount of cards I'm going to see. Yeah, there's a Brainstorm already. Blue, white, colorless, Teferi, get Murktide out, Stoneforge Mystic, okay, Nadu. I'll play that. 
And then if I brainstorm away the Cauldra, then Stoneforge Mystic gets extra cards. Could also just target Nadu twice, see what, how the landscape looks, and then make decisions. There's a Narcomoeba. I can brainstorm that away too. I can get rid of the Cabal Therapy. Okay. I'm brainstorming away more cards than I actually have to get rid of. Okay, now I win. Narcomoeba and Cabal Therapy go away. And then Cephalid Illusionist. GG. Make sure to stack this so I mill three first. That is really nice. Shuko target this. Flip the land into play, and now we're just deterministically off. There's Dread Return in the graveyard. We got cool deck GGs in the chat. I appreciate the shout. Shout out to the designer of the deck. Not me, I'm just playing it. Nadu is uh, a messed up card, though. Opponent having me play it out might just be fishing for the deck list, which is a reasonable thing to do. You can find it on my Mox field. Okay, sweet. And we win. We've got one match left to play. I'm on the play in the final round. I am going to mulligan this hand. I don't know the matchup. Narcomoeba sucks. If this Narcomoeba was like any spell, like Stoneforge Mystic, Ponder, whatever, I would keep, but Narcomoeba is just really bad. I'm going to keep this one and bottom Cauldra. There's a lot of upside to this hand, and I'm into it. I'm going to fetch Tropical Island and cast Halfling. And home up still alive, because my hand doesn't do much, but if Nadu, Teferi, or Cephal Illusionist arrive anytime soon, we're cooking. Ancient Tomb. What are we doing with this? Jealous of the Void. That's really good against my Shuko. Glad I got the Halfling down, though. Ooh. All right. They said no. We're playing against Red Stompy. They just pitched a Blood Moon, which might mean they have two of them. My hand's not good against Blood Moon. Oh. Well, it's a real shame they did all the things they did, because I was ready. I'm going to play Illusionist. I'm just going to put it out here. Let them know. If I find any way to clear this Chalice, I win on the spot. City of Traitors. The One Ring. I don't love that, but okay. Okay, Teferi. Do I have a Prismatic Ending? I played with a number of those a lot. I do have one. Yeah, okay. Ponder. Disappointing. Tough beats. Okay. Chalice of the Void. Showing me what's what. I'm going to get a fake attack in. Doesn't even deal one. But it's not doing anything else. I'm not going to trade that for a Goblin Rabble Master token. Now with four mana, if I draw a Teferi, I win on the spot. They found red. Broadside Bombardiers. If they want to sack their Chalice... Oh, there's more. Grand Rabble Master. All right, that makes it so free. Disappointing. Both of their permanents were really good, so maybe they don't value the Illusionist, but if they could sack a token here, that's just easy money. Yep. Milled a Nadu and another Illusionist. Okay. We lost a Chalice of the Void. Good stuff. Out of the sideboard, we've got Hydroblast, Force of Negation. Maybe Dismember to take the pressure off. Haywire Might and Pithing Needle both seem good. Or Haywire Might's definitely good. Needle can turn off the one ring. Lavinia is like medium fine. I think Needle and Lavinia are the tier two inclusions, and I definitely want these six cards. Field of the Dead way too slow. Maybe this should just be a sideboard card for slow matchups. I don't think step through is really part of my plan here. Ball therapy, do I care what's in their hand? Not really. But it is how I beat Fairy Macabre. I can shave a Shuko. Do I shave a Saga? It's really bad against Blood Moon. It's really good against all other situations, though. Okay, I don't think I'm going to have room for these other three cards. I'm struggling to find room for these six that I definitely want. I think I am going to cut Cabal Therapy. If they have Fairy Macabre, I can just pivot onto Nadu. No, I only have one Dread Return. I won't know that they have Macabre until it's too late. Maybe I don't want Dismember. How do I get Haywire Might in here in the last few seconds? Just play 81, because I'm a dope. Yeah, I think it's play 81 or board out a land. I'm playing 81. Ugh. This hand looks good, but I don't think it actually is. Like, I can Hydro Blast two things, Force Negation two things. Maybe I just put the shields up. Yeah, I'm just going to put the walls up with this hand. I am going to try this. This is four pieces of interaction, and then Teferi is kind of reasonable. And I can fetch Meticulous Archive this turn to get an extra look at 
continuing to make lands. If they play Chalice, I'll pitch it to Fairy to force. Throw Mox. I wish I had the courage to force that. But I don't. I never do. Rabble Master. Okay, I guess I'm just fetching Tundra then. I lose a card's worth of selection, but you're giving me these clean answers. I'm taking them. Come on, land. Always had it. Okay, pass the turn. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Hydro Blast that as well. Counter target spell if it's red. And now I would quite like to draw another land. Oh no. All right, not a land. I still have my forces up. They don't counter creatures, though. If they get in with the Bombardiers or the Rabble Master here, we could be in trouble. I hope this is a one ring and they delete their City of Traders to cast it. Sick. All right, Force Pitching to Fairy. Okay, who can find their next land drop first is what this game is now about. Ooh, okay. Just put this in. I want to spend the mana now to get this in play. Now any Nomad or Shuko I rip just does it. Back to four mana. They were never worried. Another ring. Would I rather have Teferi or Nadu in my hand? I'm definitely forcing this. I think I'd rather have Nadu. Though Teferi is an answer to prison pieces. All right, yeah, I'm going to keep Teferi. Come on, deck. Lots of good draws here. Uh, I mean, that's not bad. As far as cards I didn't want to see go. They have three one rings in a row. They tapped four mana again. Oh, they pitched five. So this is Fury. Force of will that also. I'm now empty. You have one card left. I have won the game cards in my deck. You have very good cards in yours. Top deck war. Caracas. I guess I just put Yorion in hand from here. At three mana, I can use Cephalid Illusionist flavor text. It can prevent all damage that would be dealt to and by target creature you control, which is a way to mill yourself for three for three mana, but that doesn't actually do anything. Jesus. All right, Shuko doesn't care about that. Shuko, Shuko. Oh no, the brainstorm one turn too late. Okay, Lorien reveals a good draw. Basic Island's a good draw. Shuko's the best draw. Table of the Mirror Breaker. That's a good card. Come on, deck. Shuko, Shuko, Shuko. Tundra. Oh no. It's falling apart. Fable triggers. Discarded both cards. Didn't want them. Ancient Tomb, Symbian Spirit Guide. I wouldn't want those either. Okay. And mana's being tapped. Oh, good. They did find the third one ring. Don't worry. In the top 15 cards of their deck, three one rings. It's cool. That's totally normal. Shuko. No! The Blood Moon's going to get me. My only window I had this game to fetch basic planes was on turn one, where I had to interact with the Rabble Master. Okay, basic planes wins the game. Shuko wins the game. Lorien revealed. Let's me play the game. I get to cast Brainstorm. This looks like a chalice. Ugh. All right, yeah, now I can't really win. Okay, I mean, we just fended off to a point where it was a top deck war, and they drew better than me in the two-turn window where one of us had to rip. They do have a higher density of important cards in their deck. They also have no selection. So it was just kind of a this or that. All right, I've lost. You got it. Positive record with... Nadu Breakfast, Yori on Nadu Breakfast. I think this deck has a lot of air in it. And as far as doing cool grindy stuff in situations that would otherwise be difficult, we certainly demonstrated a few spots where that happened. That Nadu game into Field of the Dead, into Find Removal for Doorkeeper Thrall, into Find Thassa's Oracle, into Mill Myself Out was insane. I don't know if we would have even been in that position if we were just a tighter deck. Like, would just traditional Esper Cephalid Breakfast with 60 cards have even found themselves in that position, or would they have won two turns ago? I wonder how much pre-war formal wear changes all of the conversations here, because that is a single card. It's tutorable with Stoneforge Mystic. It regrows Illusionist or Nadu from the graveyard, and it gives this deck a whole other layer just by including one card that we can't play on Magic Online. Not Magic Online's fault, by the way. Blame Wizards of the Ghost for not negotiating their Universes Beyond products appropriately. I think I prefer a tighter package here. This deck is certainly sweet, and it functions. It's not a bad deck. I'm just thinking about my own tournaments coming up and how I can not do most efficiently. 
I'm definitely playing Nadu in my upcoming tournament this weekend at Titan Game Shop, which is last weekend by the time you're watching this video. There's a legacy tournament for a Mox Jet, and I would really like to win a Mox Jet. And I don't think this is the way to do it. But I'm fully bird pilled. I'm on the Nadu train. And this was a really informative league in my adventure to find a, a deck that I am happy with. Everyone, thanks for watching. Headlitch in Charge, thanks for the opportunity to play this. Danny Betterman, thanks for sharing your list on Twitter. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Patreon. I'll see you next time.